What's up, guys? Welcome. I'm Eric Minotowski. Happy to have you with me. Today, I want to take a look at some artwork from an artist who I think is probably has progressed so fast. Uh, when you look at artists, all artists will tend to look like their inspirations, you know, right off the bat. There's that learning curve, and then they kind of just like they find their stride and they just hit it and they keep going. You know, some of my favorite artists, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, they kind of, you know, they started off looking kind of one way, but they, and then they they progressed, but you could still tell it was their work. But Travis Charest, in my opinion, is is one of those artists that just kind of like went along and then all of a sudden just like took off. Their art is amazing. His art is amazing. Phenomenal. Great. Good. Amazing. Fairly short amount of time. And it's really cool to see and to look at how he progresses, how he evolves as an artist. So I want to look at that. I want to go through that with you. As we'll see, I think there's just something different there. And I want to take a look at that because, um, yeah, it's it's wild. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump into it. I think you're going to like this video. But let's check out the evolution of Travis Shure. Let's go. All right. So right off the bat, I just want to point out, I mean, if I asked you, all right, who drew this? Whose work is this? You might be hard pressed to be like, oh yeah, I know his work. That's that's definitely Travis Charest. Um, this early stuff. So this is 1992, 1993. This is from the Flash Annual number five. Matt Hollingsworth there on the colors. Interesting. Uh, but this this work is you know very kind of like amateur, um, almost kind of you know indie. It's not it's not great, and that's not. A knock on him. I mean, we all have to start out somewhere. Uh, we're not all born, unfortunately, and we're drawn like Jack Kirby. It's just not how it works. We all got to start somewhere. But there's maybe a little bit in the faces there. You can maybe see kind of those impressions that you get from Trevor Shuray. But uh, it's rough. Very 90s. He's trying to like get that that hatching in there. Kind of do those those 90s uh, crazy hatching going on but it's not very uniform it's not very slick looking it's kind of like rough or harsh it's like ah eh. he's you know trying to find his way there but uh once in a while you'll get like here in the faces you can kind of see like oh yeah that's that's a little bit of travis there um but it's it's rough so this is and there it's 93 um that could be when he signed it though so here we have Dark Stars, number four. This is January 1993. And kind of see a little bit more of Travis's work showing through. And two, some of it could be the inker. Sometimes inkers will handle guys differently. And so, you know, you might have a little more of that inker's look to him than you, you might otherwise have. You know, if Scott Williams is inking him, he's going to look one way. But here, you know... This is looking pretty good. Again, still 1993. Um, you know, proportions, anatomy, still eh, maybe a little wonky here and there. Um, again, Dark Stars number four, still 1993. Again, not a whole lot here that you would look at and just be like, yeah, that's that's his work. Some of it, that that face there, bottom right, is kind of flat. All right, so here we got Dark Stars number six. This is March 1993. Um, seeing, you know, I can see a little bit in those faces there. He kind of always under the, the cheekbone has those hatching lines. It's kind of signature Travis stuff going on. But this is cool. I dig this. Now, okay, so this is number eight. So this is May 1993. And here, for sure, in these faces, I could definitely tell this is this is Travis's work. Um, definitely looks more like, like how I know him. So, so that's May. Here we go. There's uh, issue cover nine. This is cool. He's starting to kind of find his his style.
All right, so this is probably like towards the end of 1993. And this is cool. This is a bit different. I remember actually seeing this in one of my comics. I think I took it out and put it on my wall. But, um, you know, this looks, it's looking more like uniform. It's not so rough. Um, you know, he's placing his blacks well. He's doing the shading well. This is cool. So he started doing kind of like these these short um, series in the back of the issues. I think it was like 10 to 13. They're doing real quick uh, stories with like Warblade and Voodoo, kind of like backstories. And uh, so he started illustrating those. And here for sure you can kind of see he's starting to get um, better and better. Still using those heavy blacks, which is cool. And I think this was like a promo piece right before he started taking over on the Wildcats, the regular series. Um, so this, I think, was around 94. But this is cool. And I think, yeah, this is Williams. This is Scott Williams inking him. Very cool. Promo piece. Travis and Scott. And then he does... Um, let's see, this was November 1993. He does the Wildcat special number one. And this is cool. This is um, just personal. I didn't love the short stories he was doing in the back of those other issues. But this, uh, this stuff was great. Uh, here you got Scott Williams inking him. And now, granted, Scott Williams can make any penciler look, you know, ten times better than he is. But there's some great stuff here. Still those hatching lines under the, the cheekbones. Uh, I love the hair that he did on that chick. Really cool. But, yeah, this this is really good. Um, you know, so now it's like definitely that, that 90s style. Um, but really cool stuff. Love the way he does Grifter. Um, okay, so this is Wildcats number 16. So this is... He's two issues into doing Wildcats. He started on 15. He's doing, you know, does 16. So I think, you know, 15 and 16 um, kind of had one look to him. And then the issues after. Here's the cover to 17. Here it's like, man, it's got this design sense to it. And just like the way he's, he's using his blacks, he's starting to really find himself, I think. Uh, cause from here on out, man, it's just like, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, so this is that point I think where he's gone from like, you know, he's good, he's decent, but now he's like, he's finding a stride. Uh, some just great stuff here. Great panel layouts. Um, just really cool stuff. He's got that, he's, he's found that signature style of his and it's, it's awesome. Some really cool stuff. This is one of my favorite issues. This is number 17. Uh, again, he's like, he found it, man. This is just awesome. This is one of my favorite spreads. Grifter just going to town on these guys. Um, just everything about this, I just love it. Great layouts. You just feel the energy. It's flying through the air. Um, and I love how he's placing his blacks. It's, it's just awesome. Yeah, I can look at that all day. Another great cover. This is number issue number 19. Cool stuff. So again, he's got that, like, just... He's got a great design sense. And anything he draws um, is just cool. I mean, like, this is, this is just great layout. Great placement of these guys. And I love how he's using just his, like, straight blacks. And then, you know, a little bit... He's still using the hatching, but he's not doing so much of it. It's like kind of like a good complementary style. All right, then you flip to February 1997. Okay, this is Wildcats, the X-Men Golden Age. And at this point, you're just like, how the heck? Like, you know, it's like mind-blowing. So this is all him. He's doing his own inks in this book. 
which I didn't realize until I looked on the, the inside cover. But you're just like scratching your head like, whoa, he's gone from that to, to this. And it's just like, oh my gosh, the the illustrative quality here is just like through the roof. And I'll just point out too, I think at this point, he, I think he does start slowing down in the amount of work he's putting out. Um, and that was, you know, a lot of the guys in the, in the 90s, a lot of the image guys, they're falling behind on deadlines. Books are coming out late. But when you look at this artwork, it's really no wonder. I mean, every panel has just this amazing illustrative quality to it. Um, it just looks so cool. And even you'll you'll look at the, the smoke lines in the background, like super quick, you know, just throwing down some lines, you know, it's smoke. Um, but it just, it, it all works well together. The other parts are just heavily rendered. I mean, look at that face. That, that alien, well, a daemonite. But that's just like, oh my gosh. So yeah, you're looking at this and like just every panel is just like oogling over like, oh my goodness. This is just a whole nother level. I mean, he's gone out of the stratosphere with this stuff. Yeah, you're just looking at these lines and the line work. And I mean, as an artist, I'm just like scratching my head like, dude, how do you do this? This is uh, just fantastic. So yeah, so he goes from, you know, he's he's awesome. He's doing great stuff. And then, you know, goes to this and is just like mind blowing. This guy over here looks, reminds me of uh, John Travolta from Pulp Fiction, but... Just the way he's doing his lines, the way he's rendering this, um, yeah, it's it's next level. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I don't think he's using like whiteout or you know pro white to get these little dots in there. He's he's doing it all by hand. I mean, some places I could see where he might have thrown some whiteout in there, but yeah, not not everywhere. For the most part, he's doing little dots, and so. Again, it's no wonder that it's taking him so much time to to get these this this art done. Uh, it's all just amazing, and 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 I want to. You almost have to differentiate between like you know when you're doing comics, it's quicker. They call it like you know shorthand. You're you're doing things quicker. You're not taking time to you know render every knuckle or every vein in the hand necessarily. I mean, you can, but. Not every panel, so you're you're doing like shorthand. Um, here's some really sweet um, costume designs, new concepts for for when he takes over Wildcats. Very cool stuff. But you know, when you look at some of the the books later on that Travis did, it's like so illustrative. It's you know, uh, yeah, like all the lines in the background. I mean that that's gonna take time for sure. So I, it, the end product is like awesome, but it, it takes time. And so, um, yeah. And as you guys know, I mean, he, he kind of started falling behind, falling behind. And then <clears throat> after a while, he kind of just fell off the map. Um, but this stuff we're left with is just like jaw dropping. So this is around March, 1999. This is the new... Wildcats when they started back from number one you got Richard friend inking him and uh, I love these the, the pages with the grifter and stuff and you know It's just a different take on these characters that we love blah um, This stuff is just so cool so fresh. I love his take on these guys You know grifter grifter here uh, Loses the trench coat and you can kind of see his his notes no more uh, armor, no ray guns, he's low tech, less superhero, more of the uh, the loner type. This is a cool piece. I actually have a print of this that I got from Richard Friend at a convention, but really cool. So, yeah, just so, so cool. There's so much art we could look at, but this is the last piece, but I want to point out here, so this is Wildcat 6. And here's the page, right? The normal size of a page. And he's he's shrunk it down. He's doing these super small. And the only reason I could, you know, think is he's 
doing them smaller so it'll be quicker to get them done and, and just get these pages out. Um, and even at that smaller size, I mean, look at all that, just that, the detail, the, the kind of great tone he's creating with his lines. I mean, it's it's amazing, man. I could look at his stuff all day. But anyway, there you go. There is a bit of the evolution of the amazing artist we know as Travis Charest. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I found it very fun, very interesting and informative just to look at this look at this master and just how he has honed his craft. It's it's pretty spectacular. All right, guys. Thanks for staying tuned and uh, check out some bloopers. Peace. I have a, a fun ride for you today. I'm not going to call it a ride. Not a ride. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Eric Notowski. Welcome. Today, I want to take you through some artwork, some amazing artwork. Well, sort of. As you will see, it's not all amazing. <laughs> uh, through the evolution of this artist, and um, you already know through the title, but whatever. Um, I won't keep you in suspense, but the artist we're going to look at is Travis Charest. You look at our other artists, you look at some of my favorites, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri. They kind of start out, you know, there's that learning curve. They start out looking like someone else. They look like their inspirations, you know, John Byrne. Uh, John, John, um, John Buscema, Joe Buscema, John Buscema, John Buscema, whatever. And then they go and they, phew, okay, start again. Take three. In my opinion, he's, he goes from like, eh, okay. Eh. Take four. <laughs> cut.